<laughs> no. what, do you, what do you think about just chops in general? Uh, I wouldn't chop unless it's advantageous to me, so yeah. I, I completely understand it. I mean, I'm no Shannon Shore, who is, I don't know if you guys have seen, but the master of chop negotiations. And so, Yeah, what well, makes him the master? Um, if you look, there was like um, a few months ago, he chopped, and I can't remember the exact number, but... My, my my boy did the thing, you know what I'm saying? If you, if you take a look, just Google Shannon Short Chop. He he could run a legitimate uh, video series on how to get them the to— Negotiation? The negotiation? I guess. The art of the chop? Yeah, the art, the art of the chop. <laughs> the art of the chop. <laughs> so good. Uh, it's the Poker News Podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 825th episode of the Poker News Podcast. I am Chad Holloway, joined by Kina England and Mike Holtz. We're at Level 9 Studio in Las Vegas, and as you can see, they are wearing two just beautiful Phil Hellmuth masks. Now, for those of you who don't know, this was the Poker News April Fool's Day joke this year. Uh, you guys can take them off. You don't have to wear them. I made them move for a little bit. Um, Phil Hellmuth had his whole debate over masks with Ike Haxton, and uh, I got Phil to do a little uh, joke with us. He was in on it. He released a video uh, on his YouTube or on his social media or wherever it was, you know, saying, and, and people fell for it just like they always do every year. And I think for the fourth year in a row, it was another home run April Fool's Day joke for Poker News. So Yeah, some of the replies are pretty funny. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll leave it at that. But uh, we got a great episode for you. This uh, episode is sponsored by Poker Stars. We're going to talk some old school poker pros who have been in the news recently. Phil Locke, Mike the Mouth Madison, we're going to talk about the World Series of Poker and what we're most excited about. We're going to talk about some magazine covers and uh, some chop, like uh, some chopping in a poker tournament. There was a, a very interesting one recently, and uh, I know we all got some fun chop stories. So let us start with the old school poker players. Um, let me ask you guys, before we were who we are in the poker world now. You have the big, big shots. The big, yeah, the big shots of the shots. Poker yeah, News yeah, podcast sure. that we are. Uh <laughs> You must have had like a favorite poker player that you saw from poker boom days, right? Or on the poker TV, right? For me, I love the, you know, he's late, uh, the late great now in the Poker Hall of Fame, uh, Devilfish Elliott. Sure, uh, yeah, I yeah. just love the character, the persona that I've seen on the World Poker Tour and what have you. But there's been a lot of big names. They might not be big names in the poker industry anymore, but were there any two that stuck out for, for either of you? I really like Tony G. Oh, yeah. I always like watching him play. He just was fun. He was entertaining. He always was talking while he was playing, trying to confuse people. So I appreciate that. I like him. And he started Poker News. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't Tony know G that. Tony G started Poker News. Tony wow. G started uh, with some, I think, business associates back in, I want to say, 2005, started Poker News. It was their their idea. Uh, and then over the years, you know, it grew and they ended up selling it. And ultimately, you know, it's now part of the Flutter Corporation. But I think Tony G is the man that it started with, which is pretty cool. Well, thank you, Tony G. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty interesting. Cool beans. Yeah. What about you, Mike? Was there a big name poker pro that you uh, that you liked back from the poker boom days? Yeah, like it's hilarious. I've got three. My three favorites were always uh, Phil Helm Youth. Tom Dwan <laughs> and Phil Galfond. And yeah. two of the three now are like I, I, not my favorites, and I love Galfond. That's my dog. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's, it's funny how it comes full circle. Yeah, I think Galfond is like if you had to pick one person in the poker industry where it's like, Who's somebody that everybody likes that everybody trusts? Like mm -hmm. Phil Galfond's name has got to be right towards the top. Of I that, can't right? imagine anyone being higher than Phil Galfond. Let me to think. Uh, no, no, that's it. And he's, in, he's in, based in Vegas, so I should get him to come down just to the studio one day if he's if he's oh, willing. 100%. I don't know if uh, if he'll come down, but if he will, my God, he's the GOAT. I love Phil, and always interesting stuff with him, and yeah, he's a really cool, unique person. Yeah, and two others uh, that were big names during the Poker Boom days, uh, Mike the Mouth Matisau uh, and Phil Locke. We see, I think, more of Matisau nowadays because he still lives in Vegas. He's still grinding. He's been out there on social media. He's very polarizing right now, right, with his political takes, uh, which we're not going to get into. But he's <laughs> out course, there. He's yeah. very front-facing, whereas Phil Locke has taken more of a step out of the spotlight. Uh, of course, he's the uh, longtime uh, boyfriend of Jennifer Tilly. They've mm -hmm. been together forever. I love them both. Uh, and he's still grinds. He still plays poker, but just not on the level or on uh, under the spotlight that he used to until recently he returned to high stakes poker um, which we'll get into but let's start with Madisau. Um it was interesting because as I said madisau has got his uh, his social media and he's not afraid to get out there and a few weeks ago he was slated to play the Hustler Casino live on the sure. live stream there and he tweeted out a fun video uh, <laughs> talking a little smack and uh, I thought we would share that right here Max Payne Monday 
Nick Vertucci, I'm coming for your nitty ass. You think you know everything, but you don't know shit. Old school Mike is in the house, and I'm coming to get you on Max Payne Monday, Mr. Vertucci. Watch out, because you're say that word all right so he does go on hustler casino live did you either of you see any of it watch it uh, see some of the clips online i saw the clip i saw the set over set clip um i didn't really watch that episode though yet i probably will i've seen some highlights he he, he actually did quite well he said he was going to crush it and mm-hmm. he went there the first day i think he won a little bit not nothing too exciting but the second day won like forty thousand or something yeah i, know, I think top so. of my head. yeah i watched a couple clips um yeah well, we've got one. We've got a clip to share. It's <laughs> yeah, just yeah. a little bit. It was a set over set hand, yeah. as, as kind of said. Uh, it was Mike with a set of eights over Luda Chris, uh, who had a set of deuces. We're not going to play the whole hand because these things stretch out. But we do have the last couple minutes or so where uh, Mike bets $15,000 on the turn with uh, his set. And Luda Chris is in the tank with the, the other set. Here's how it played out. Once again, Mike in another set over set scenario to the good side. It looks like he's going for the fold. Can he find it? Little bobblehead posturing there from Mike. Perhaps trying to put off some kind of scent here. Can he let it go? Luda doing some yoga breaths here. And he finds a fold. Well done by Ludacris. Not easy to do when you're in the octagon, that's for sure. Oh, Chris, I thought he had 4 5. Especially when you're a player as aggressive as Ludacris is. Huh? I you always wonder if people are discounting how strong your hand indeed actually is. That is not easy to do. Hell of a fold there by Ludacris. Okay, or 5 7. Yeah, one of them. Open ended. Up with him and. I, I put him on four or five. I'm about to flop. I tried a big hand. Yeah. Turn it. I flopped a hand. I flopped up there, then I turned to a close draw. Probably the you play of the day so far there. The the Unbelievable yeah. fold there by yeah. Ludacris. All right, there it is. You've seen it. Ludacris gets away, Mike. Are you impressed by that, uh, that lay down? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> like Mike Mattisau and bluffed since 1943. Like, what are we talking about so here? It's no, an, yeah. it, it, no it, it was an impressive laydown. And if you've watched Ludacris at all, he's not really one to like to fold. So I don't know. It's a pretty disrespectful fold, honestly. He's pretty out of character. Yeah, I thought that too. Like he's pretty full force most of the time, but picked it up, sm- sniffed it out, made the good fold. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, it, I don't know. It doesn't, it seemed like a... Uh, he did sniff it out, but he was like right next to a Texas barbecue cooking at noon. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it wasn't, it was, everyone smelled what was going on. And like, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think Mike's pretty transparent with his play. Uh, I mean, it, it is transparent, but even still it was a, uh, there was two spades on the board after the turn. There's no straight possibilities at that time. Um, and maybe that's why, you know, you have to put Mike on a draw. Right to be ahead there, right? And uh, yeah, or a worse made or a hand. Two pair, somehow, yeah, somehow. yeah. Wasn't I suppose. it like a like a nine, eight, or eight, six board or something? Yeah, like eight, that. six, deuce, jack. Yeah, so like a two pair, maybe. I don't know. Like it's hard to have there. Yeah. Uh, I was impressed with Mike going on uh, Hustler Casino Live and dominating. I'm sure Mike will be nominated for the Poker Hall of Fame again. He always is. He's a perennial nominee. Uh, a lot of people think he should be in, including himself. Um, and I think there's an argument to be made there. The problem is with the Poker Hall of Fame, as we know, there's just this backlog. They're only sure. getting one person every year so far. Uh, and that's only going to get worse because the Phil Gelfons, the Tom Dwans of the world are about to hit that 40 mark and become eligible. So what's the what's the eligibility? You just have to be above the age of 40. And then what's the criteria that you've uh, 
that you've crushed for for so, a long yeah. period of time. So or something standing like that. the test of time, yep. whatever that means, right? And um, had the respect of your peers. Or if so Mattisell's dead. <laughs> well, that's a <laughs> respect from your peers is one of them. That is one of them. He's yeah. dead. He's stone dead. <laughs> I, I mean, I think there are certainly people who would vote for him. Like Phil Helmuth is really good friends with Mike, and he's yeah. in there, right? No, for Midranu sure. is friends with uh, Mattisell, so I think he does have his supporters. Um, it's just like I said, it's this backlog situation that um, really it probably is is holding him back right now, and it's only going to get worse, unfortunately, before it gets better, unless they do you know some sort of mass introduction, but. It just doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. So. I don't. I just don't see how Madison would ever get into the Hall of Fame, even if they were like letting three to four people in. Unless, I mean, he's just getting like lollipop votes. You know what I mean? I, I don't think. I don't know. Has he withstood the test of time? I think he fell off. Com- I don't think was he. I don't know if he was ever on. No, I mean, I, I disagree mm-hmm. with you there. I think he has. He was playing in the '90s. He was one of the biggest, most successful players there, and in, into the poker boom. There were certainly years in the 2010s, if you will, where his career fell off. But he has picked it up in recent years, I think. And um, standing the test of time is an interesting thing, right? Because let's take a player like— um, Did Osmus is Osmus in? Did he come get in last year? No, he didn't. He's not in. But um, he's nominated, right? I think—I don't know if he was nominated or if he's just turning eligible. I think he's right around that 40-year-old yeah, mark. Yeah, I think he— yeah, okay. I think, he, I, I think he's eligible yeah, now. I think this could be his first year. Uh, I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, I didn't sure, feel like he was 40. Like, it feels like he's younger than that. I think mm-hmm. he's just a, a great-looking young man, and he's just <laughs> killing it. But I think he is. I, I don't know why I think that. I, he Wasn't he, didn't he play on Full Tilt and Poker Stars back in the day or something? I, th- I think he is 40 or 41. Yeah. Could well, be wrong. If I'm wrong, my apologies, Jeremy. You know, I think you're beautiful, you know. <laughs> well, the standing of the test of time is interesting because let me ask you this. Fader Holtz. Mm-hmm. If he stopped today, didn't play another hand of poker for no the rest Hall of his of life, no Hall of Fame for no you? No Hall of Fame for sure, no question. So did, in your kind of mind, he you have to be standing the test of time into eligibility almost, right? Because you have to be 40. So unless With one person getting in per year, yeah, for sure. I mean, if it was more lax, if there's five people getting in, then it's a sure. totally different story, right? But like, I don't know, with one person getting in a year, which number one, I think that's, it's one or two. It's one, it's one right now. It used to be two, but ah, it just doesn't make any sense. Why are there not? There's so many poker players, right? Like it's like the UFC. The, I mean, not the UFC has a great Hall of Fame, but like uh, every other sports Hall of Fame. I mean, they're not. How many people get in a year? I mean, baseball, it's a handful. Like it's double digits. I want to say I don't know that for sure. And, I know in how football, many, it's usually like seven or eight. And how many poker players are playing compared to baseball players professionally? Right? It's like a, yeah. an insane. So many multiplicatives more. Uh, wasn't there an argument too recently for like having an industry person like separate category? Because yeah. I thought that's what they did. Did, did they? I, not? I think no. they were talking about it because yeah, Negreanu is pushing yeah. for it pretty hard. Maury's in right. Yeah, Maury's been in for, I think he was a uh, 2010-ish oh, okay. nominee. So he's been in for a little while. Um, I know what you're talking about, and I think it's a good idea, right? Because there is such a difference between the industry people, like a Matt Savage, yeah, right? I was thinking Matt Savage, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, look, for me, the Poker Hall of Fame is not ever going to be complete until Esai Scheinberg is in there, the the founder of Poker Stars, yeah. who is sponsoring this episode, by the way. He, he was nominated last year. He yeah. has, yeah, he's been nominated for the last few years. He was kind of blacklisted for many years because he was facing the Black Friday indictments sure, yeah. and such. But, I mean, that man is almost, no, he's not single-handedly responsible for online poker, but he is largely the, you know, he's the, if it was a chessboard, he's the king of okay, online. Okay, that's fair. I don't know too much about it, but yeah, yeah. wow, good, Maybe, good looks. <laughs> I mean, it almost feels like it should be more of a, like, rather than with, withstood the test of time, more of a left a legacy. Because like you said, like, if Fedor stopped playing poker today, like, he has still left a legacy. Like, he has a lot of training. He's done a lot for the community. Like, I, I just think that, you know, just withstanding the test of time, it's like, okay, well, you know, people like to change it up. People don't necessarily play all the time. There you should know? be wings, yeah. I think. Uh, like, and I, I think uh, it's changing, too, where, like— um, I think WSP bracelets and WPT titles can easily be interchangeable at this point. Like, I think online should be different from live right. as well. It's I a agree. completely different game. I mean, when, I, I I think it's like the difference between uh, chess and have you ever seen the chess variants where like you have like four knights? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of having like a rook and a bishop, you have that. Like, that's like the difference between live and online. It's like if you play the same way you play on one as you play the other, you're, you're not going to be having the best time, yeah. in my opinion, <laughs> at least. I actually gave the WSOP what I thought was a golden idea to solve this uh, backlog problem for the Poker Hall of Fame. Because I love poker history. The Poker Hall of Fame means a lot to me uh, from that Are you, aspect. You're a voter? 
I used to be when they allowed the media to vote, but they have since done done away with that aspect, and now it's only the living Hall of Fame members who get a vote. Oh, oh wow. see, that is crazy. Yeah, and no, so that's really bad, in my opinion. Yeah, really I, bad. I think there'll be changes in the future, and I hope there are. One of the things I did propose to them to solve the backlog issue was when it was first moving from the Rio, the World Series of Poker, moving from the Rio to the Horseshoe. I said, guys, look. The first year of the Poker Hall of Fame, 1979, at the Binion's Horseshoe mm-hmm. downtown, that first year they inducted seven people into the Hall of Fame to kick this thing off. I said, you're moving to the Horseshoe. It's a new era of the World Series of Poker, right? You could get away with saying, like, in honor of the move to the Horseshoe, this year's Poker Hall of Fame class, we're going to take it back to 1979 and induct seven people. Yeah, that'd and be great. you clear the backlog. And you open the door, pave the road for the Tom Dwans, the Phil Galfons, you know, that are coming and and still give the due respect to the uh, Matt Savages, the Mike Mattisals, or whomever deserves to be in and are likely being held back by the uh, the backlog. They could also do some sort of like milestone too, like every time like we hit like uh, 20 years or 30 years or 40 years, you know, let a few more people in or like let however many decades, you know, like 40 years, let four I, I people think, in. I think the, uh, I didn't know that the Hall of Fame voters are the only ones that get votes. I think that's so bad. It's a bunch of people above the age of 40 voting on who should be in the Hall of Fame. Like, I don't know. I think there's a there's a much lower chance that they're um that that they're, you know, they're familiar with every single player. Oh, absolutely. And, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, so like here's a great example, and I've interviewed him, Crandall Addington. Huge in the 70s, early days of the World Series of Poker. Uh he, he's older now, I don't know, in his late his 70s. His first name's Crandall. Whatever. Yeah, Crandall Addington. I love that guy. I know nothing about him, but his name's Crandall. It's so cool. It's a cool name. But yeah. he, you know, he's Crandall. he hasn't been in the poker world for decades. He's a businessman in probably retired now in Texas. And so he doesn't know who Tom Dwan is. Right. He doesn't know what's going on in the poker industry now, uh, but he gets a vote. Mm -hmm. Not saying he doesn't deserve the vote. He certainly does. But it should be balanced out, in my opinion, by the media folk, those who are in the know of the modern day game. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. Or some sort of. Some sort of committee so that that knows, but the fact that you're not on there is crazy. I mean, I, like literally, any time I'm around you, I'll, I'll I'll be like, oh yeah, like uh, you were born in 1987. Chad's like 1987, the year of 74 bracelets. <laughs> that was when they introduced the double team nutsack tournament. Blah 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 blah. Like, well, 1987 you, you, was the first year that Johnny Chan won the main event. <laughs> yeah, see, there we, there we go. You know, I I, mean, I swear to God, I think you might know more than anybody. So I yeah, think for you not there are a few voters. people out there who have. The, some pretty deep knowledge, but I, I think I'm definitely one of them. Uh, getting them back on track a little bit, uh, Phil Locke. I've actually got a very strong connection to Phil in terms of uh, giving him credit for me being here right now to this day, because when I was first starting out in the poker industry back in 2009, 2010, uh, Phil Locke had an online website called UnabomberPoker.com, oh, yeah. you know, long defunct. But at the time, he was capitalizing on who he was in the poker industry, and they had a blog associated with this website, and they were looking to hire two writers. And I had to apply, submit a sample, uh, and I still have the email buried in my uh, digital clutter of him accepting me Aww. as one of those writers. So I was uh, it was one of my first you know gigs in the poker world that I got to uh, start building my poker resume on, and um, you know I've always been thankful for that. Uh, do you guys have much interaction? Have you played with Phil Galfon? Do you know him at all? Phil Galfon or, or, or uh, Locke? Phil Locke? It's Sorry, the same yeah, it's yeah. The same so, guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. What was he playing? Oh man, it was it must have been a couple of years ago. Like he was he's been gone. He was gone for a yeah. while. But like I was in line to register at a Venetian tournament, and he was standing in front of me, and I didn't even realize it was him. He was like all bundled up with his headphones and everything and he goes up and he buys in and then he like tips the cage lady for selling him a ticket which I thought I was like wow man that's a stand up guy and then I was like oh my god is that Phil Locke and it was and so I ended up at his table at one point too I think it was like 1100 it was he was probably trying to like warm up or you know for the series I think it was like starting before before the series started anyway that was my only interaction with Phil Locke but I love Jennifer Tilly and I'm still looking forward to meeting her someday I haven't met her yet you know I got a new picture up but I had a picture of me yeah. and Jennifer Tilly on the desk yeah, here for many did. weeks and Nobody then in the day that we talk about her you take it down <laughs> like wow <Yeah>. wow <laughs> Uh, what about you, Mike? Have you met Phil? Played yeah. with Phil? No, no, I played with Phil a couple times. The first time, I was shocked at how friendly he was. Like, uh, in contrast to uh, meeting some other big name poker pros, he was like so 
cool. Uh, we exchanged numbers. Like we were talking the whole time. I sent him a list of like uh, he wanted to know the uh, the online players, and he wanted me to help him get set up on WSOB.com this year coming up. So uh, hopefully we can still get that done and everything. And yeah, and no, super cool guy. He's really open about everything. And then I actually had one of my buddies came to Vegas recently, and his uh, he was there for here for work. And somehow they had like some sort of like work tournament or whatever, where they had nine people down at the horseshoe or 18 people. And Phil Locke showed up and <laughs> was like, I'm going to play with you guys. So like, he played <laughs> cool. with them and he That's got there. Really yeah. cool. He's awesome, dude. I, I love Phil Locke. I think he's, yeah, he's, he's phenomenal for the game. Yeah, is not, he in the Hall of Fame? He is not. No. <laughs> yeah, he's got to be in there. You got to put Phil Locke in there, right? Yeah. Am I tripping? Yeah. Put, put Locke <laughs> in there, baby. I, I mean... Look, I, I would probably vote for him because I love Phil Locke too. But yeah. I, you know, I would say Mike Mattisau has a better case than you, Phil. You know, but. you might you might be right. In all honesty, I, I I don't know how many bracelets Locke has or anything I think like just that. Just one, but, just um, one, maybe yeah. not. Then, but I love Phil. You yeah, know me what I mean? too. Yeah, there's and a personality it, bias there for me. And he my was, bad. He, he was <laughs> such a legend on uh, high stakes poker. You know, during the booming days of that. Yeah. And so that's why I was really excited to see him make his return for season twelve, and just to see him back battling because kind of like you said he's been away from the game for a little bit i mean i think he's been playing you know just incognito yeah. like you said a little mm-hmm. bit so like, no i, I don't uh, whenever i talked to him i think he hadn't played for like a year yeah that could and be. this was like we played either like the plo8 or maybe we played like a, a 3k six max i can't remember but uh yeah this might my interaction with him i think was like it was 2021 i think like, oh okay is that was that the year that the series was in october it was yeah. that yeah, yeah it was like sure. right before it was like a venetian 1100 yeah okay mm-hmm. cool beans yeah yeah all right well do us a favor we're gonna transition to the next story i'm gonna actually thank our sponsor before i do go ahead and subscribe to this show i'm gonna drop it right here just click the button maybe it's over here it's I over there the second it. one yeah, yeah the, the second, second one. okay <laughs> yeah. um and uh yeah do us that favor and also a shout out to our sponsor of this episode which is poker stars they are gearing up for their uk and ireland poker tour the uk IPT. It is back, and this time it is bringing the thrill of poker to the sun-kissed shores of the Costa de Sol. Uh, it says, get ready for an unforgettable fusion of sun, sea, and poker as UK IPT teams up with the Estrellas Poker Tour for a special summer holiday in Malaga? Uh, I'm going to butcher that Malaga. One. Malaga? Where's yeah. Malaga? I don't know. I just, I don't, I'm just, just saying know words. It. No, no. I, <laughs> I don't know, but I want to go. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I was thinking Malaka. Sounds awesome. Like Malaka Styles. What, what's, uh, what's dude's name? I play with him in the main. What's his name? Malaka Styles. Like a picture of his face. He's, uh, no one knows. From no. June 10th to the 16th, 2024, <laughs> poker enthusiasts yeah. will converge at the Grand Madrid <laughs> Casino. Uh, Tora Quebrada for an electrifying week of cards and camaraderie. Uh, what a great sponsor Juan Pardo I just did. it's Juan Pardo oh Juan Pardo yeah Malaka Styles <laughs> he's a cool guy <laughs> alright well let's talk about uh, Nick Papillo I was trying to transition can I yeah. do Pardo Papillo somehow but it just mm-hmm. wasn't going to work yeah. uh, Nick Papillo is he's the reigning I think mid-major player of the year yeah. at GPI mm-hmm. yep uh, I think Midwest we all, guy yep we all know Nick I know him very well um, he was in the news because he was a part of a chop. Uh, this was up at the WPT Rolling Thunder a couple of weeks ago. It was a side event. I think of the mystery bounty event. Um, we're not going to go into too many specifics other than to say it was three handed. He was the short stack. There was a 25 K mystery bounty still in play. And he basically used his experience, his poker resume to negotiate a very good chop for himself because the guy who was the chip leader was a not so experienced player. He had like sixty eight thousand in lifetime tournament earnings, sure. and the money meant a lot to him. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was just an interesting uh, power move, if you will, for Nick to be like, you know what, I'm not going to chop unless this is a good deal for me. Yeah, I mean, got to use your experience there. I, 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 a lot of players too, like the trophy means a lot to them. If they can just take the trophy and you know take their fair share of the winnings, then they're happy with that. And as long as everybody's happy with the deal, you know, it's their money, not your money. You know, so. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's all I have to say about it. It's good for him. What do you? That's th- all I have to say. That's about all that. I have to say. <laughs> no. what, do you, what do you think about just chops in general? Uh, I wouldn't chop unless it's advantageous to me. So yeah. I, I completely understand it. I mean, I'm no Shannon Shore, who is I don't know if you guys have seen, but the master of chop negotiations. And so yeah, what what makes him the master? Um, if you look, there was like um, a few months ago he chopped, and I can't remember the exact number, but. 
my 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 boy did the thing. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you take a look, just Google Shannon Short Chop. He he could run a legitimate uh, video series on how to get them the to negotiation. The, I, I guess the art of the chop. Yeah, the art the art of the chop. <laughs> the art of the chop. It's so good. Uh, I've seen it's been I think more so online that I've seen this where somebody has actually negotiated a deal for themselves that's more than first place money. I think Dan Smith did this yeah. several years ago oh, online, wow. uh, and it's just because. You know, the this second and third stacks or what have you realize we're probably not going to win this thing. So we want to chop. But in that case, you know, all three players have to agree to a chop. Right. right? So then he says, well, I want more money, more than first. Like you're yeah. conceding first and I want a little bit more, which I just think is badass. Mm-hmm. I'd never agree to it if I was one no, of the other No, of course players, not. But. I mean, it's just su- such a gigantic error. <laughs> that would be like, yeah, mm-hmm. we'll quit and we'll take less than we could possibly. You know what I mean? It's just so bad. Do but. You, either of you have any good chop stories that you've either been part of or, or seen play out? Um. I have, well, I have a moment that like sticks out in my mind. It was actually really recently at one of the ladies' events and we were on the bubble. And, well, no, this isn't a chop story. Never mind. Okay. okay. I've got, a, I've got <laughs> some chop stories. Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> I've got some, we're going to keep that in. Uh, I've got some chop stories. One time uh, there was like 18 of us left in a $100 Dover Downs, Delaware monster stack, stack, stack. <laughs> and uh, w- there was like 18 of us left, 19 of us left, wherever it was. There was two tables. And uh guy eliminates me. Uh, I, I, I like w- people are talking about a chop, and I'm like, dude, there's 18 of us left. What's going on? This one guy to my right has all the chips. Like I'm talking like 40 percent of the chips in the tournament. He's all on every hand. He's, he's doing all this crazy shit, and uh, he he goes all in. He, I call with like Ace King. He's like nine four off, eliminates me. And the second that I stand mm. up, he's just like, y'all want to do an even chop now? <laughs> like, it was like I was, and they were all like agreed immediately. And they did. They chopped as I was. I was so angry. I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, my favorite chop story was when I was involved with. So when I was heads up for the WSOP bracelet back in 2013, uh, me and my opponent got relatively even in chips, and he mm-hmm. said, "You want to go have a conversation?" Now chops aren't facilitated by the WSOP, but well, look, we're not stupid. Like deals happen under course, the table yeah. or in the bathroom, what have you. So I said, all right, let's go have a conversation. And he offered what, from a monetary standpoint, was a very fair deal. Um, but kind of, as you said, like it's sometimes it's not all about the money. The trophy means things and sure. the bracelet meant something to me. It's right here. You know, it's been on the, the table for each show that we do. Uh, and the reason I didn't chop be- was because he said something along the lines of, you know, we can do this deal. And then, I don't know, just flip for the bracelet. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want to do that. Right, and I realized in that moment that the money is what was super important to him. And if I took that pressure off of him, then— He could play easier. Yeah, he's just going to go all in. He's going to play crazy. He's, you know— Sure. And so I said, no deal. And I'll never forget that uh, we went back to playing, and Jason Mercier, who I was friendly with, uh, came by the table, and he, you know, shouted out, no chop Chad. So that was my (laughs) name for uh, before Bitch Ass Chad Holloway. So, yeah. um, Look, I, I'm all for chops. It's the player's money. If they want to do it, they should be able to. But uh, I'm like, Mike, I don't chop unless it's advantageous to me. Yeah, so. I made a pretty big mistake actually last year in the Venetian 1600 car player tour event where I chopped three ways and I got like 97,000 or something. But when they showed me the ICM numbers, the guy who got first, he uh, his buddy had showed it on the calculator to me. And the, the, they'd like redone a bunch of stuff and we were figuring out things. And then he showed it to me again and I took a picture of my phone just to like make sure, blah, blah, blah. And what I didn't notice, I mean, we've been playing for two days now, the whole day. It's like 14 hours in day two. I'm not, you know, may, maybe that's why, maybe it's not. But I didn't notice he had put our chip stacks in incorrectly. Mm. So I actually got about $2,400 less than I should have gotten. Just pretty annoying. That is actually quite an interesting point. If you are going to chop and use one of these ICM calculators on your phone, like yeah. to make sure, A, that the numbers are right. But like, I got to imagine there's a, a exploit there in terms of like somebody could develop a very, uh, an ICM app that is incorrect. Yeah. That's incorrect. Sure. So that they benefit from it. And yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't be any of the wiser. I, I think there was some, maybe my phone was dead or something. I, Cause I have an ICM yeah. calculator on my phone. I could have done myself, but I, or maybe it was just the guy behind. Cause it, it's like a well-known pro. I don't want to say who it was, but the, the, it was a well-known pro who did it, but I don't know. It just was what it was. Yeah. It is what it is. It's my fault for not, you know, double, triple checking. But it's interesting because, like, uh, as a poker player, I'm not thinking about going into a day two, like, how am I going to negotiate a chop right. at the end? Like, it's just, it's like, oh, it's here, it's now, we're talking, okay, fend for yourself, right? You just so, need to wait for Shannon Shore's The Art of the Chop Masterclass. No, 100%, <laughs> yeah, 499 uh, discount for uh, April 20th. 
All right. One of the stories that you wanted to talk about this week, kind of, you messaged me uh, about it, and I thought, yeah, absolutely. Uh, your friend Olga from oh, Game yeah. of Gold made a magazine cover. Yeah, man. If you haven't seen that cover yet, it is fire, man. That chick is hot. Um, I just, I love Olga. Olga's so great. Um, she, you know, she puts herself out there. She's proud of herself, and uh, you know, she goes with it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's Rounder Magazine. Mm. Um, they have a bunch of different issues. I think they do like a uh, spring, winter, or something. Just a couple issues every are, wait, year. Are they the ones that are the Mike Postle defenders? They are the yeah. So they are the Mike Postle defenders. Okay. Um, they and they have the history of finding women to feature on the cover of their magazine. Uh, I'm sure a lot of that. We're going to flash some of them on the screen as we're talking here. Um, they've attacked me. Pers- you know, because Router? of the Mike Postle stuff. Yeah, yeah. They got their Twitter account. They've called me out uh, many times. So I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of them. Right. Um, I am fans of poker magazines in general because we've seen a decline of that over the years. So the fact that they're putting one out there. And look. Man, any, fuck, any, fuck rounders. <laughs> <laughs> any, come, at, come at the king, you best not miss, boy. <laughs> anytime, though, that some, a player gets on the cover of a magazine, I think it's pretty cool. So to yeah. see Olga get on there, because I do think she was also one of the breakout stars, if you will, of a game of gold. Because I, I wasn't familiar with her before that, and I'm familiar with a lot of the poker world, right? That's my my job. Sure. Is, and so to get to know her through that was cool, and then to see her you know, get the magazine cover, and I hope her career continues. Have you kept up with her at all? Yeah, we're pretty good friends. Uh, I saw her in the Bahamas the end of last year. You know, she's overseas, so I don't get to see her except for during these big events, but I'm sure she'll be out for the series. I'll get to say hi and hang with her. We 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 get along well. Like, we made friends, you know, in Korea, and it was it's awesome. She's a, she's a sick, sick lady. That's what she said. So sick, so sick, baby. Like, I love her. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll look forward to meeting her during the, the WSLP, and who knows, maybe you can get her to come into the yeah, studio. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. We love you, Olga. Speaking of the WSOP, that is going to be our last topic because it is going to be uh, right around the corner, probably five weeks away uh, from now, I think, something like that. Gosh, Sounds right, it's yeah. Right around the corner. Yeah, yeah, and it's going to be here before you know it. Are you guys excited? Like, do you still get the the summer camp vibes? Like, oh, I get to go see 100%. all my friends and play the games? I'm aroused. Yeah. yeah? I can't wait. <laughs> like, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be two months of uh, t- glory. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait. It's going to be sick. Uh, I, I get really excited for all my friends to come out. Yeah, it's like nice when everybody's here. You get to see everybody. I'm such a social person. You know, like I, I like poker because it's such a social activity. So when all my favorite people are in the same spot, it's great time. I think for me, uh, and I used to travel the world doing uh, live updates from poker tournaments. So I was going to EPTs, but I was also going to MSPTs. I was going down to South Florida. And so to see all these people, right? You might see a, a Howard Hankin from uh, the <laughs> Howard, Midwest. I always see Howard. <laughs> you know, battling, battling with a European, Northern European pro or something, yeah. right? So to, to just see all these different walks of life converge and compete. Is I, Howard Hankin 92 years old? I mean, at least no. I'm just joking. He's not quite that old. But Howard, I don't know. I don't know Howard. Yeah, I know. Howard. We'll is, introduce you to Howard when right, he's yeah. here in Las Vegas. Yeah, like it's one of those. We'll have to have a conversation with Howard. If you oh, know, yeah. you know. Like it's, oh, Howard is a character. I probably played with him and just forgot. I don't think so. Yeah. You, you know. wouldn't forget. Okay. I, maybe I just didn't know his name. He's just like a Midwest rag guy. You know, he just is. Just talks and talks. He's Josh Reichardt's best friend. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> He's a character, and uh, look, I'll, I'll 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 call it right here. Like, come WSOP time, I'll get some videos of Howard Hankin yeah. and put them into the show because he he will be gold for the Poker News podcast. There was I like a wait. Facebook group about Howard, but I think it might have tri- trickled off just like Howard moments, and you post with him, and you take a picture with Howard, you put it in the Facebook group. But I don't know if it's still around. Yeah, well. Let's uh, let's show a little clip right now, quick. Uh, this is from uh, Abby, who does some social media for Poker News. She put out a real, a fun video when the WSOP schedule was originally announced. I wanted to share that right now. It's finally here. The WSOP has officially released the 2024 daily event schedule. They've also introduced some really fun new events, such as the Poker News Deep Stack Championship, Big O Championship, PLO Double Board Bomb Pot, and PLO Mystery Bounty. My personal favorite is the Champions Reunion No Limit Hold'em Freeze Out, where if you knock out a former main event champ, you get a free entry to the main event of the World Series of Poker. What are you most excited for? All right, so WSOP, right around the corner. What events are you most excited about? Um, if you have one at the top of your mind, I don't want to like call, you know put either of you on the spot, but do you guys have any? No, I have like a big five. 
Like you have five. I have five. Okay. Well, there's five that I want to play, and then I kind of figure it out from there. But I like the I don't know what order they're going in this year, but the uh, Millionaire Bounty, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, the Ladies Event, the Monster Stack, the Millie Maker, and the Main Event. Those are my five that I will play. I mean, for sure. Mike. Uh, I'm looking forward to the ladies event as well. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put up that $10,000. Yeah, I think it's time. I, you know, <laughs> do I, it, I, I, do I, it. King of the women. No, uh, <laughs> holy I, that wasn't that funny. Um, I, I'm going to go monster stack, Mo monster stack, Millie maker. Like all the weekend ones are great. Main event. The same things you said. Uh, yeah. Oh, I think there's a new event this year. Some sort of deep stack sponsored by someone. Does anybody know? Oh, he might be <laughs> referring to the Poker News deep stacks. Poker News. Yay! That was a big, that was a big win for us. Uh, we. No, that's sick. When I know, saw that, I was like, no shit. That's yeah. so awesome. I've been around the World Series of Poker since 2009. I think this is my 16th year in a row, which I think is a record in terms of the poker media because I was actually there in the COVID years, mm. right? Had to do go through that and a lot of people weren't. So my, my streak is intact. Through all those, I never thought I'd see this. Like uh, the WSOP is just, they keep things really close to their chest. Yeah. They don't open it up to this sort of stuff much. Uh, so the fact that they were willing to do this uh, is great. And for those who don't know, so you've got the bracelet events, right? And there is going to be a $600 Deep Stacks Championship by Poker News. Uh, but there's also the daily Deep Stacks series that run at the, the WSOP. And these are great because it can be like a $250 buy-in. And in the past, I... I don't think the numbers are quite as high as they used to be, but I know if years ago, one of our poker news reporters played a deep stack and won $50,000. Yeah. They get big, yeah. Yeah, and so what poker news is doing is we're going to do a deep stacks challenge. Um, basically, how it's going to work is that during the daily deep stacks, there's three different buy-in points every day, a $200, $250, and $400 daily deep stacks. And from May 28th through June 24th, so right before the $600 bracelet event, there's going to be leaderboards for each of those buy-in deep stacks. And they're going to be every week, the top 10 on those leaderboards are going to win $600 tickets into the actual bracelet event. Okay. Oh, cool. And so in the end, I think there is going to end up being, um, gosh, how many? 40, 40 seats given away from the daily deep stacks into the Poker News Deep Stacks Championship. Sick, yeah. So. If you're uh, looking to play a bracelet event but don't have the bankroll and you are more of a daily deep stacks person, I think this is this is awesome. No, yeah, it's pretty sick. Fine. Yeah, and wow. I expect both of you to play that six hundred dollar poker news deep stacks championship. <laughs> oh no, I was literally like I was daydreaming about how I'm going to win it and hold it up. And I it's mean, gonna be that'd be pretty thing. badass if one of the three of us could win that and bring that uh, you know that poker news bracelet and there will be a trophy, I believe, uh, you know, to the set here. I yeah. like trophies. Yeah. I like bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> what um, about the casino event? Are you gonna excited for that one? Is I, that you gonna defend your title? I am excited about it. Uh, defend my title from eleven years ago. Yeah, uh, I mean yeah. it's still it's a continuance. <laughs> it's, you know? a it's funny. I was, looking, year. Champion, you know? <laughs> I was looking at my hand and mob and realized my last. This is sad that my last tournament cash was in last year's casino employees event. Now, oh. granted, I haven't played a lot, uh, you know, since then. Uh, but I ended up. It was the first time I've cashed the casino employees event since winning it back in 2013. Oh. Second time's a charm, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I finished in 60th place, so I had a nice little deep run. But um, I definitely played it. I played it every year you know it's kind of uh and technically i can play it now right i i mean yeah i actually do <laughs> think so yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. you guys are gonna you guys is you it know. okay if i play that yeah yeah you, you, you sure about that you are from not for like from a morality standpoint you know what i mean, I mean from a I think so okay. i think there's a lot of people who are tangentially connected to a casino sure. or yeah, a yeah. poker media company and stuff but like if you're actually getting paid by a casino or poker company right that qualifies you so yeah um yeah it's a fun event you know it's a little more turbulent but whether or not you guys want to lower yourselves to to play i'm the, not i'm not worried about it. i'd love to come <laughs> play with the casino employees i, I want to you know do there's some fly. there's a fly there's a fly around if I'm here being oh, weird that's why fly. oh i see it i seen it right over oh, here you somewhere. got a glizzy on your hoodie i didn't even notice that oh yeah Oh, yeah. Tell us about this hoodie. What do you Team got on there? Team Hot Dogs. Okay. So um, this week is the Lips uh, Championship, or I guess, what would it be? Lips Series, um, which has a really fun team event. So me and four of my other girlfriends from Vegas here, we are a team, and we're going to, um, you know, go kill it, I hope. 
we're going to win. Yeah. Going down Portland punters. But um, last year I was on a different team and we got second place and Portland punters got first place. So, right. and that is my good friend, Angela and Jackie Burkhart. That is their team. And, um, you know, so we got we to gotta come for them this year. So mm. go team hot dog. There you go. And that's what, at the South Point? South Point. Yeah. South Point. So to recap, team hot dog is coming for you. <laughs> That's what we're getting at. That's what. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that just sounds so uh, menacing. Team hot dog is coming. Yeah. For you. Yeah. No. It's, it's so many nitrates coming. <laughs> you know. It's not. That's. Oh uh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you're going to have a trip going uh, up north to Reno, right? The Run Good Poker Series. Yes. So I will be uh, an ambassador at the Run Good Series. I played a few Run Good events, but I've never played like the whole week. So I'm going to go and I've never been to Reno either. So I'm pretty excited about that. So if you can come by, come by and play the Run Good Series in Reno with us. We'll have a good time. It'll be awesome. Yeah, you're going to miss an episode here in I studio. Know. We're going to have to find a replacement for you. We'll find a good one. Yeah, we, we talked off the air that if one of us has to miss, then you should get to pick your own replacement. Yes. Right? Okay, yeah, sure. I mean, I reserve the power to override that. <laughs> right. right? You, no, you looked into my eyes and you knew that the errors yeah. were made. I'm like, yo, this is my boy Mike. He just got out of jail. He's like, yo, what's popping, boys? <laughs> prison Mike. Yeah. Oh, wait, you, you know Prison Mike. I forgot about this. Yeah, Prison Mike's a real person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just know him from the office. You know? Oh, the pr- prison. Pr- you know, Mike, uh, my, my, uh, Steve Carell's my, uh, oh, that's Michael Prison Scott. Mike, too. Yeah, oh, shit. Is I have my own Prison Mike. Really? A, r- a real life Prison <laughs> yeah, Mike? Yeah, you've met Prison Mike. I probably have, yeah. Mike, you you, did, you definitely did. Okay. This is a real person and not like an alter ego of yours. <laughs> no, no, no. It's my, it's my buddy Mike. He's he's been to prison and now he's uh, playing poker uh, uh, professionally in Vegas. Did he play poker in prison? Is that where he learned? Um, we played poker in uh, Dover, Delaware first, and then yeah, then he went to prison, honed his skills, uh, and yeah, now he's out here crushing souls and taking names. I actually kind of want him to be on the podcast now. No, you you, de- you do his 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 level. Of of entertainment and comedy is so high you, you it's unbelievable actually like no no there's no one like him he's, so he'll be mike's replacement you can't yeah. have me you can't replace me with another mike yeah no we <laughs> you, no you certainly could i, I will be a hit <laughs> isn't there, there's already a show on uh, espn like mike and mike or something mike does that mike. still exist chad mike and mike greenberg and goldie i used to watch that going to school yeah <laughs> all right well that's gonna do it for this episode of the poker news podcast like i said the next two are gonna be from the cruise ship the virgin voyage uh wpt voyage i'm gonna play i'm gonna have a lot of fun i don't know who's gonna fill in uh, i might ask one of your game of gold uh co-stars uh, Robin Poker, Lucas oh, Robinson. Yeah. Uh, he is a Poker Lucas. News ambassador as well. He's going to be on the ship, so I might ask him to sit in. You should. Yeah, yeah. he's a great guy. Yeah. But uh, until then, like, subscribe, click the button. Help us spread the word on this Poker News podcast. Uh, it'll be a few weeks before we're back in studio, so you guys get to go live your lives, have some fun. And for all of you watching or listening, we'll keep a seat open for you. Deuces.